So House of the Dragon, um, season two, episode five, Regent, amid whispers of bad omens, the Greens consider how to fill a void in Aegon's council. Jocera sets out on a rogue mission to strike a deal. Damon enlists Lord William Becca Wood to help persuade the Brackens to bend the knee. Um, I actually want to start with Damon anyway. Okay. Okay. Because the dude just had a vision that he fucked his mom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and I think that whole sequence was done really well because mm-hmm. I just, I mean, to prove your point, kind of <laughs> watched both Christian and Ro- Roka watch <laughs> the whole <laughs> episode. Yeah. And, um, both of them had different, like, the way they played the scene. Every viewer is running through their mind. Who is this? Who is mm-hmm. this girl? Like, mm-hmm. and and they had some opinions. Like, is that um, Emma, who was Viserys's wife? Mm-hmm. Is that who? Who is that? Nobody guesses. Yeah. Mom. That's and, it, actually, I thought that. To be honest, I thought that was my, my first reaction was watching the scene real time. Was like, is he like hooking up with Viserys's wife? That was my reaction. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say the mom. No, um, no, 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 no. I, never, my, I didn't see that I, coming. I was wondering if it was uh, like a, a an age of Renera that we hadn't seen yet, because so mm. far his only visions have been of Renera. Mm, that's good. Yeah. And so I thought it was like her in her twenties, because mm-hmm. well, her early twenties, late teens, because I feel like there's a there's a there's pretty much a period of time that we didn't really see yeah. um Renera grow up. So yeah. so that very well. But no, it turned out to be the mom his um who I believe in season one mentions that he killed his mom during childbirth. She I think it was I think she was he was three when she died. I think I heard old West Road seeds or something. Why. I, I feel like I feel like he, he killed Are you, that might be might be right. I, you know, it's been a long time. I have to, I have to double check. Uh, yeah, and yeah. and I feel like that's why there's blood and there's something else going on. Um, about like to have all of these visions of Renera and then suddenly be slapped with a mom he never really knew. Mm-hmm. And and there's blood on his hands potentially from from his mom, and now. Yeah. There's all of this political drama and like, do do women in his life die at, at his own hands? I mean, technically, his late wife died of her own will. <laughs> She's like, yeah. I'm going out on my terms. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but he still he didn't have to impregnate her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is a recur- you're right. There is a recurring theme with Damon and and losing, but significant women in his life. Um, and, and he's under- not really helping Renera right now. Like no. he's making the war harder, and she either wins this or she dies. Like there is no yeah. alternative at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I when I when I think of Damon, I, I was just like, I, I, I've just basically become. A new subcategory in my notes of just Team Damon, and we're watching Game of Game of Thrones, House of the Haunting of Damon, because that's what Heron Hall has, has really become. Uh, you know, but and I, you know, and it, to your point about the blood on his hands, and not only his the women in his life, but also just just literally what what he the actions that he has undertaken many times, to- several times in this series, and most recently this season with. Again, the hands-off killing <laughs> of of the you know of his, of Jeff Harris, and then of course the uh, the people in the Riverlands uh, with the Brackens, and, you know, and so we have work obviously war criminal criminal Damon who uh, who who you know, in both situations he just like look the, the crown you know we can't put the, we can't have the queen's hands on this, but at the same time you know what you got to do. So oh, the, you know, he doesn't so, say queen. He says right. the crown. The crown, yeah. Well, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, but we can't have the, the crown's fingerprints on this. And 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 to that point, with you know, we keep seeing these visions of blood on his hands, whether it's his mother, 
you know, when he had the divisions in the um, in a sleep um, in Heron Hall and the bed there. Right. And I know the I know the, the, the I guess the wood that the, the, the that the castle and the chambers and stuff is made out of, you know, has some magical properties too that that that, that feed into that. So, um, you know, so with with all these visions that he's having, uh, that's why I call it the the, the haunting of game you know it feels like its own little separate show at this point where it's just like we're just dealing with damon and his quest removed from the from the larger story right right he um and they're starting repairs and restoration on heron hall um amid all of this continued crowns lands like like there's too many lands okay Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna throw that out there because all we keep we keep hearing how oh, Sir Christian has conquered the crown lands. But then I also hear things about the river lands and I'm like, what, what, what land is where, who, what? This is why the opening sequence of Game of Thrones worked because it was a map. <laughs> and I'm very disoriented right now on the map as to where is what, especially yeah. when, when... <laughs> <laughs> dig, dig out the dig out the map from Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how how far. Um, what was it? Uh, the last place that they fought at. Uh, Brooks Rest. Uh, Brooks Rest is from King's Landing, but I felt like it took a few episodes for them to get there, and then suddenly within an episode they're back. I'm just saying. I'm just I'm just saying. And I think Brooks Rest was pretty close, if I recall, <laughs> compared to to Her- Heron Hall. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just need a map. But yeah. so that is what's going on with yeah. um, Damon. Yeah, well, yeah, one last thing with the Damon, also just the the Lord, the 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 Brackens in particular. I, don't, I really wanted to, you know, note how, in addition, you know, we 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 guess again more follow up from the the proxy war that was going on. You know that the Brackens and the Blackwoods have their thing. And, you know, they really look at the Targaryens at this point as interlopers. And I just love that scene where, you know, Damon's there with uh, Caraxes and, you know, talking and, and and the Bracken's just like, you know, have no Fs to give. He's just like, yeah, you can you can say all this stuff you want, but we ain't backing down. And then whenever they're walking away and and just how they immediately cut to that next scene, I couldn't help but think like, holy grail. <laughs> <laughs> of like whenever Arthur was like sitting uh whenever he was trying to recruit knights of for the round table in Minor Python and Holy Grail when Damon's sitting on that rock, it just had that kind of vibe to it. And it's how defeated Damon looked. He's like, I just yeah. You know, he he's here to do a job, but he can't kill them because he needs these people. But at the same time, he's just like they have utterly stood up to him and he's just like at wit's end as far as what to do. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's also losing his mind. Yeah, that, there's um, that little thing. Yeah. So, uh, also on Team Black, we got Corliss, who's going through grief right now of his late wife. Um, and then, you know, just when you think Corliss has no woman to put him in his place, his granddaughter does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is like, you shall be the hand. <laughs> and I shall not be your <laughs> your be heir. Your, nope. <laughs> I'm a, I'm yeah. a fire of blood. <laughs> um, but she also, it, she, when she when she says that, <laughs> well, earlier she talks about her mom and how her mom went out by fire, mm-hmm. and that's how she wants to die. And I immediately thought, like, well, back up a second. <laughs> So you're telling me all Targaryens are suicidal? <laughs> like all y'all yeah. are suicidal? Because well, and and I found it very interesting just because like I I'm seeing the Targaryen in these characters, um, even the high towers come out more and more just because like Aegon did a stupid thing and he got burned for it, literally. But at the same time, it's exactly what Renera wanted to do this entire episode. Like, they don't like other people. They, they want to take action. They're not people of politics or anything. Um, they are much more people of 
of of action and so it's really hard to sit on the sidelines especially when your side keeps losing people and you're you're like I I thought Rhaenyra's um why she wanted to go made a lot more sense and was much more compelling than why Aegon wanted to go (laughs) yeah for sure for sure (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean that that really that really was um you know driven home even more so in this episode and, and just sort of her, her rationale and reasons for, for doing that. And you know, and, and you know, and she sits there with Bela and you know, talking about not only she's whenever she was trying to you know, can use her to go to Corliss to convince him to be the hand and, and to your point too is you know not only her, you know, her mother but also her grandmother you know going out in a blaze of glory like that too um i think renera um even though rationally she knows that it's not prudent for her to be the leader going out on the front line but she does want she she, she wants it because you know just sitting on the sidelines here and these old guys sit around and be condescending towards her about being a little lady who can't go fight you know there, there's there's that aspect of it um but also like you said it's just that wanting to be there, there it's that action and, and want to like get their hands dirty and and, and and do this thing yeah and it's i don't think it's just about the clear sexism that occurs on her council but i find it interesting that she Renera has only ever received honest and good advice from other women because mm-hmm. and she had that in Renice a lot. Mm-hmm. And now that Renice is gone, you see her have that encounter with her small council who's made up of men. And and then she she had a very good comeback to their whole point about the <laughs> sex which is like yeah yeah she may be a gentler sex but she's definitely a smarter one because point Renera. and then she goes and talks to the white worm and who who i i've been like mixed on this whole storyline but finally in this episode i really start to understand why it's important that she's there and for Renera to be able to get some wisdom and guidance from her especially be able to communicate what's happening over at king's landing yeah Yeah. so with the people and 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 like that's something i really appreciate how you by the point that scene occurs you've already been shown enough of king's landing to for for you in your mind being like yeah this is good advice she is spot on you're not you're not thinking like I don't remember seeing any of that. No, no. Yeah. Uh, White Worm yeah. was exactly right. Yeah, that that yeah, that's one of the things I knew when I messaged you Sunday night. Whenever we were uh, just giving my initial uh, initial spot reaction to it was, I think I even I noted how they're pulling all these threads together that we saw earlier in the season uh, with with the families. Um, and the small folk and, and, and King's Landing. And yeah, it was definitely a payoff with, with that. And, this, and you're right. I mean, she, Sarah, the white worm, definitely sort of like the uh, unofficial, the, un- the her and Bela are the unofficial counsel, but they have been given her spot on advice to, to fill that, that gap now that Renice is no longer with them. And, and I love that idea that, you know, there's more than one way to prosecute a war. You don't, it, you know, if we're short men, Let's use the situation there in King's Landing, especially, you know, uh, what we see Eamon does when he, when it, then it will get into further into Team Green here in a, shortly, but uh, how, how he's made a, a bad situation worse with his actions. Right, right. Yeah, I, the, the use of war, <laughs> that word in this episode, um, it kept being brought up. Um, and because it's a war between dragons, and that was made perfectly clear by the events at Brooks Brooks Rest, and just how yeah, men can go into battle, like Sir Christian can take all the castles he wants, but what's going to ultimately win the war are these two beasts who 
Yeah, the the rider can control them to an extent, but they have their animals, so they'll take out you no know, anyone that's in their way, regardless of sides or bent knees or anything. So exactly yep. to try to like that's that's one war, and mm -hmm. then everyone else is just like, oh, great, <laughs> we're playing a <laughs> game of politics almost, yeah. and yeah. and bickering and their own stuff. Um, Jace goes and meets the phrase, secures them, does a very good job. Um, he, he ends up still being alive when he returns back to Dragonstone. Thank God. Mm -hmm. And he managed to ha have an alliance. Now we, we kind of hate the phrase, but that's a whole different story. And, but it was funny to see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, again, I, you know, coming to the coming to the Game of Thrones world, you know, fresh with House of the Dragon. I, you know, I, I don't know all the lore and, and backstory. I mean, I, you know, just I, I do know that they do have the the, the the twins and the fries do have a role. I think down down the line with one of the Starks. Um, but, uh, but, but just watching, just getting to this episode with this and seeing Jace basically be an emissary, uh, mm -hmm. for, um, an unsanctioned emissary at that <laughs> for, for Renera, uh, and, and pulling, pull, pulling this, pulling this off. Um, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, and it was a good use of like statesmanship and, and brinksmanship with like, he didn't like have to, you know. He, you know, it was a good contrast with like his style and and, and Damon's style. Because if Damon had gone over there to like negotiate, he he would have used Craxies as a blunt instrument. Whereas I think Jace implied the, you know, look, I'm here on a dragon, y'all, but I I can let's 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 talk. Let's let's you know he did it. He was a very skillful negotiator. So I I really liked the way that he he played his hand there and. And uh, was able to get them to decide with 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 Team Black. Um, yeah, well, they proved that because we saw Damon yeah. on his dragon, yeah. from blunt force, and then we yeah. to contrast with what Jace was doing. Um, yeah. And and then he furthers becomes an MVP of the episode as he has a conversation with his mom upon his return, and. They together come to the conclusion that they need more dragons. Therefore, they need more dragon riders. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, let the hunt begin to those who fell out of the bl bloodline, which we met Hugh a few episodes ago, and you had already pointed out like there's a potential of him becoming a future dragon rider. So we're going to yep. see him again, along with potentially a few others because they have yeah. at least two dragons that are large enough to take on, um, Vagar who have yet to been claimed, so to speak. Yep. So I thought I, I really liked the way that whole conversation went from like kind of arguing to understanding, to mm -hmm. let's look at this a different way. Um, yeah. We we and and I, and just to point out, Renera, like her father, going to the histories, which yeah. we saw Allison attempt to do the previous episode. So Viser still lives on. <laughs> he does. He does. His council is on. I, I I have I have like mixed feelings about Jace's solution because on the one and I, and I and I and I and I will tie this to what we saw what the greens did because on the one hand yes it's a brilliant idea and it, one of the things I really liked about this episode too um that I hadn't really noticed before but in Dragonstone it, I, there was always the faint sounds of the dragons in the back just to like remind you that you know we have an arsenal of dragons here um and then whenever he does come up with the um with the plan to uh you know to 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 have the bastard targaryen targaryens that are out there be their potential riders i thought that was a great tie-in of course you know we've been and of course with corliss becoming a hand and and then and all the things going on with alan and 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 bernice last week just like making 
having Corliss, you know, she basically forgave him for having the affair and having the bastard child out there. So now, you know, they've been having that back and forth throughout the season about Alan saving Corliss and, and also, so that's another potential rider because he is, you know, he'll, I guess he, even, he, you know, he's Valerian at least. So I guess they can also be dragon riders. So yeah, I, I thought that was a good, all good tie-ins there. But yeah. where, hmm? yeah, yeah. How do we know uh, that? Um, they have, I guess, the high because they speak high Valerian. And, yeah, but that doesn't mean that they're. And they do have. Valerian. Yeah, I think like, they. Like, I think wait they a have, second, I'm con- I'm confused. That doesn't yeah. mean like they speak high high Valerian. Any anyway, go go ahead. I no, know. I think yeah, I think. I think they can, and I might be wrong. And if I am, listeners, correct me. Again, I don't. But I thought that they could also be potential dragon riders, because they have drop of the dragon's blood. You know, whatever gene that, whatever it is that makes the Targaryens. I think they could also have it as well. But the the other point I was thinking of with Jason, the short term, I think that's good. But in the long term. I think it gets to a, a, a potential miscalculation that that Christian Cole and Hightower had when they were marching melees down the down the street, and that it it, it takes where you know where you know, think about the line where where the kid was like I thought dragons were gods and the guy was like oh, it's just meat and I, and I, to that point it to me is the I guess taking away the luster of was special about the Targaryens, uh, in that you know only you know it, it, it normalizes them to the sense that anybody could be a dragon rider, um, and just how the whole parading melees down the street makes takes the 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 lust the, the invincibility away from from the dragons. And that's why you don't like the plan. Well, I just think it's a it's a good plan. Care. It's a good plan, but in the short term, it's a good plan. But in the long term, I just wonder, like, it, you know, if 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 we're trying, if the if the goal, you know, of Targaryens is to be this mystical, special family that only has a special connection with dragons, and now you're 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 letting um, not pure Targaryens like fly them. Does well, that, does that than take a pure to, Targaryen. Well, and that's the point. I mean, there, you know, and you know, which, you know, I think back to Amen in the season, season one, where he was like such a strong, all these strong boys here, you know. So, <laughs> so, so, you're saying that it would it would be better if it was only pure Targaryens for the for the appearance of the 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 regality of Targaryens and even you know why and that's part of the reason why they intermarry so much just because they want to have that pure Targaryen line right 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 uh that's all, I'm not saying I mean I'm just I'm just putting that out there as a thought I'm not saying that's as as a potential downside of Jason's plan no, I'm not saying that's what I believe but I think it's it could well, be it's more of a criticism of his plan yeah yeah well that's yeah. what we do here yeah. yeah. No. 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 You're. You're right. I just am thrown off by it. I. I wasn't yeah. expecting that, and I was like, I don't. I don't really know. But um. Okay. So. So is that it for Team Black? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Okay. I mean. I know there was Bela with the. Uh, where she was up in the in the, the mountains ear. with the hills. The ear, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She was uh, at the Erie. She had one scene. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah once see they're like funny she's like you know i wanted dragons like you got dragons <laughs> you didn't tell me what size you wanted <laughs> yeah yeah and we still have to cover the boys <laughs> <laughs> um team green so sir christian i'm just gonna start off with him because he he is like the most frustrating character i'm watching on tv right now because at the start of this episode complete idiot doesn't yeah. understand why people are upset that they won and are parading around a dragon head in King's Landing. But then by the end of the episode, when he's talking about talking to Allison about why he did not support her trying to become the regent in Aegon's stead, 
he makes an excellent p- point. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, dude, you you actually did understand something out of all of this. That, yes, even though he knows what Eamon did, it doesn't matter. Eamon is a dragon rider, and he controls their largest dragon and is a very tactical military person. So mm-hmm. that's who you want in charge right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. You were not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 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 Laris, you know, the snake that he is makes the good point too in the council there where I mean it does undermine the whole reason why they're like, wait a minute, if we put you in charge, then why are we fighting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He um if he if they put Allison in charge. Al- Allison in charge, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and they were like, and, and Strong was like, no, I mean that's that just undermines our whole cause here. Yeah, what are what are some of your takeaways about Team Green? Yeah, I mean those were those were the, obviously the, the 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 two. Of course, it, it touched on the miscalculation that uh, Cole had in, in parading the dragon head down the street, and uh, uh, that can you know, really uh, undermines that the mystique of the dragons and. Um, you know, which I think it could also come into play as far as um, also the other cal- miscalculation that that Amund has in, in locking down the city um, and right. not and um, because people are so desperate, you know, the place was already blockade from getting additional supplies and stuff at the beginning of the war effort, and you know that was one thing. At least you know Aegon had. He had his fault, faults and flaws, but I think he did recognize, which a- Amund and Cole and others do not recognize, is that, you know, we, we need to small, keep the small folk happy, and we need to make sure we provide provision for them. Um, and and so, you know, so that was definitely, this, you know, so you're right, Amund clearly is a, from a tactical standpoint, he, he, he is the right person to be the regent to lead the war effort but as far as having the wisdom and and bigger picture of like seeing things from a you know, 360 view he he he, he, do, he he he's not equipped to do so right right yeah um yeah and, and then you know getting back to the council scene and, and just one of the things I, I thought of i thought of you and one of the uh, things you had mentioned earlier this season about Allison and Renera not having uh, scenes together, but what really struck me with this episode too was the they were the, tr- the two anchors of of the story here, and, and just sort of how circumstances and people around them and how their reactions to it, um, or how 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 it all unfolded. Uh, you know, we've touched on the sexism and, and stuff, and we saw it in both in both chambers as far as how the men were, but also just the the what one of the things we talked about in the past, but and we saw it again in this episode is their their approach as as mothers, and 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 you know when Allison was there with Aegon in the in the chamber at the end there and come, trying to comfort him, um, it was you know she she. Versus Renera and her dealing with her kids and approach with like whenever Jace gave her the good advice and stuff. Um, well, she it, it's to it. And versus that, Allison didn't, you know, she just called, you know, Aegon a, you know, an idiot loser. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Something that people have pointed out is or posed a question of does Allison hate her children? Mm-hmm. And and I think that I don't know if there's hate because she definitely cares for them, mm-hmm. but there is some despisement and there's there's also just have I created a monster? Yeah. And and their actions, I think it's more about the actions um where that they've pursued and who they've become like Mm -hmm. i know that there's a maternal love there and bond i mean she wanted to take out 
Luke's eye when when she found out about Eamon. Um, yeah. She she's had a lot of protection, and she she's the one who put Aegon on the on the throne. Yeah. Um, but since then, and everything that has transpired, there is a lot of guilt, and mm-hmm. there is a lot of shame, and also every single time one of her boys fucks up, she's like. I fucked up as mom. I fucked up as a queen. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like, so, so there, there's a lot there where Renera doesn't have that, that much where she, she's grieved. Well, she's still grieving Luke probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we don't see that as much. We haven't really seen that since the first episode, but I don't know. There's not as much, regret when it comes yeah. to Renera and her children. So yeah. um yeah. But yeah. all right. Well that is it for-